You read the title right. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an AI pizza detector. But before I get into it, let me show you how it works. Is this pizza? You found pizza. George Washington. Is this pizza? This ain't pizza. Is Kevin O'Leary pizza? This also is not pizza. Is this a picture of pizza? I don't even know what's on that pizza. It looks disgusting. I think it is pizza. It is pizza. If you like that demo, make sure to give this video a like. I'm going to show you how to build this pizza detector from scratch by only using channel GPT and AI tools. I'm going to do very little coding in this one. What we're using to make this work is OpenAI's new Vision API, which basically allows its language model to see images. And what we're going to do is build out a little interface so we can determine whether or not the image we're inputting is pizza or not. And the fun part about this process is you can have it do whatever you want. If you want it to detect how many fingers you're holding up or whether or not you're looking at a car or some other kind of prompt, what you can do with this is actually limitless. Anyway, enough talk. Let's get into building this AI pizza detector. So I'm over on VS Code here, and we're really not going to need any other packages for this video, except what you're going to want to have installed. Is make sure you have Live Server. This will allow us to view our HTML file inside of our browser. So make sure you have this installed, and then we're just going to come on over and make a new file, and I'll call it pizzaai.html. And I'm actually going to use ChatGPT for this one. I've been using GitHub Copilot. A little bit. I think this project is a little bit better for ChatGPT. So I'm going to stick with ChatGPT. We're going to say, build me a simple HTML page that has an input and a button in the middle of the page. Make it look nice and use Poppins font. What we're basically going to be doing is using a very simple HTML page and then hooking that up with an API call and then returning that API call to give us our feedback for our image. And we'll basically have a pizza detector. So I'll copy this code here and I'll head back over into here. And then from here, we can just right click on our pizza AI HTML and open with live server. So we get some text input here and as well as this click me button. Okay, we're gonna need to do some editing. Okay, I'm gonna say make this nice, make the text input an image input, make the button blue and put it below and make it stand out in the center of the page. I wanna see if we can edit this a little bit just to get it looking a little bit nicer before we go into the AI portion. This is kind of the overall method and process I've been using to build out very simple pages. I'll copy this over, come back into here, we'll save it. And if we head back over here, we should get a little menu box right here. So this is perfect. This is kind of exactly what I was looking for. And what we can do is we can upload our images. So if I have this image here of George Washington, right, we can use this as like a little menu to then click on upload image and then get our detection back for whatever is in the image, right? Just with these two simple prompts, we've already got a little bit of something built out here and let's keep going. So what we're going to want to say here is, so say, can you make it display the image above the image input and center this all horizontally? So if we kind of look through the HTML here, we can see some differences. It kept the style here pretty much the same, except it added this image display here, which this will be for our image down here, ID image display, right? That's how that's correlated there. And everything else should be pretty much the same, except for now we have this script tag down here. And this is where we can add JavaScript functionality to our HTML page all within HTML, which is super nice because this will allow us to make our API call so we can keep this all inside of one HTML file. I'll copy this, head back over here. I'll paste this all back in. So I'll save this. I'll come back here and we'll give this a shot. I have this picture of a dog here I just put in. And as soon as I upload it, you can see it puts the image right in the center of the screen. Perfect. I want to add a little header to this as well. And I'm going to add an H1. And what this will do is this will give us the ability to add in some text. So I'll say AI pizza detector right in there. If we save it, come over here, we can see we added in our little AI pizza detector. And if I add an image, it also puts the image in there. I'm gonna get rid of the AI and just make it pizza detector. We need to let them know that it's AI. Add in a little emoji to make it a little bit more fun. And there we go, we have our pizza detector. So this is kind of our main UI built out already. What we need to do now is basically the last step of this process. Process. If we head on over to OpenAI, we're going to head on over to their documentation and I'm going to kind of walk you through what we're going to be looking at. And that's going to be this vision section here and the capabilities. And I'm going to be doing a lot more videos on this because I actually think there's a ton of great use cases out there, specifically this one down here where it can understand video. There's going to be a lot of cool projects that are going to come from this section specifically. But for now, what we're going to use is this quick start guide on using 
using vision inside of an API call. So all we're doing is we're using this model GPT for vision preview, and then we're uploading our image, we're going to copy this code, but instead of copying it, and I think your guys will automatically be on Python to start with, but we're going to switch this on over to curl. And we're going to copy this, I'm going to come into here, I'm going to say on button click, send this API call, and I'm going to paste in the curl command that we just copied from the open AI API documentation, and then return the response JSON under the button, I need the entire response. And hopefully what this will do is implement the exact same thing, but with this URL, we're not going to have it look at the image just yet, because we're going to want to do this in stages to make sure it works correctly. So it gives us a style for the API response, which I can then highlight and copy over accordingly, I'll do that in a second, though. And then it has a little section here for the ID API response. And then it also gives us great another function here to send requests. It changed this button here to add this on click send request. So it's calling the send request function that will run this JSON script, which is the exact script that we got from OpenAI's documentation. So I'll copy all of this over, come back into here, and I'm going to paste this right into here. It'll give us all of our old styles plus our new style, and then our edited button, this little pre text here, and then our function here. And we need one more thing. So we're going to need to add our open API key, we're going to head back on over to open AI. And in our documentation here, we can actually go up to API keys, and we can make a new API key. So I'm going to call this pizza create secret key. And then I'm copying this secret key. And I'm going to slap this right into here, we're going to keep the little quotes around it, I'm going to get rid of this little note here, save this if we head back over and I click on send request. Oh, look at that. All right, sweet. So we got our JSON response here. So this is the response that we're getting from our API call. And because we have this, we are golden. So I'm going to copy this, come back into ChatGPT. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, can you make it only display the text instead of the entire response? I'm actually going to say text content, just to make it a little more specific. So we're just pasting in the response and we want it to only produce this information here. Because then what we can do is we can swap out the input for our image, and then we can modify the prompt to give us what we're looking for. So what it looks like it's doing is it's changing the stuff down here to extract only the text content. So I'm just going to take this here and swap that out in here. And it kind of looks like it messed up the information a little bit. So I'm going to just hit tab on all of that. And then we can come back in here, I'll give this a refresh, and then we'll send this request again. And then hopefully it should only print out the text from the API response. Okay, we get the text, but it's kind of weird. I'm going to say this very blunt prompt. The text doesn't wrap in the box and it's not Poppins fonts. Fix this. Also, we lost our pizza AI detector here. That kind of sucks. We got to add that back in, add in our H1. All right, we're back. Yeah, the pre was kind of interesting. I don't think I've ever seen pre before, but we're going to use div in this case. So we have this new div here, which we're going to exchange for this one here. And then we're also going to add in this new style here. So I'm going to copy that over and just kind of slap that in there. I'll send the request. Perfect. There we go. So now it gives the text inside our box here all nice and looking pretty pretty. What we'll do now is I'll copy all of this over head back into chat GPT. I'm gonna make a new window for this one. And I'm gonna say can you make it use the image from the image input and send it in this format in the API call and we're going to use the format from one of the other part in the documentation right now it's sending the image as a URL. So if we were to look at our text here, the image shows a beautiful natural landscape featuring a wooden boardwalk extending yada yada yada. If we were to click on this URL here, we get this image, right? But we don't want it to use a URL, we want it to use an image that we have picked in our little image section here, we need to actually send the data of the image to the API call, we're gonna want to use this style in order to send the image, I'm going to copy this section over with the image and then put it in there like this. So now we're telling it to send over our image in base 64. I'm pretty sure it already like should know this basically what base 64 is the way to send media files through API calls in a way that the other end of the API call can understand it. All right, sweet. So what it does is it actually converts the image to a base 64 string, and then it will send our image that we just got our base 64 image, which is right here. 
perfect. So I'm gonna copy the new function all the way up into here and I'm gonna paste it right into here with our new information. So now we have a new little script here that hopefully should send our image here. I have this picture of Barack Obama. So then we'll send request and see what we get. All right, perfect. So we successfully sent the image over to the API and then returned our information accordingly. So now what we want to do is this is the fun part here. What we're doing is we're basically prompting the bot with this text prompt here followed by this image here. And we can change this text here basically like you would in ChatGPT to alter how to respond to this image. So what we will say is this. You are a pizza detector. Determine if the image is pizza or not. If it is pizza, say you found pizza. If it is not pizza, say this ain't pizza. Save this, head back over, and let's choose a file. So if I choose our good friend Barack Obama again, send request. He should not be pizza. This ain't pizza. <laughs> but if I go to my desktop here and I pick a pizza file, send request, you found pizza. Look at that. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> We're gonna do a few more modifications to this to get it looking a little bit cleaner. Say, can you enter the response text and then add a waiting icon while the API request is happening? If there is already text, remove it for every time the API call is being ran. So, okay, just doing a couple things. Okay, so this is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I just want this to be in the center. So in our API response, can I just add that in text align center. Okay, perfect. We'll, we'll just slap that in like that. So we have this div here, which is for the loading icon, which we're going to use this loading dot gif, use a loading gif of your choice. So we're going to say, can you use a gif off the web for us? Because if we kind of go through the code here, we'll notice that this says use a loading gif of your choice, which I don't really want to find a loading gif right now, and then rewrite the entire script with the changes. So we have our new code here, I'll copy this over, paste that bad boy back in, make sure to save it, head over here, our new new pizza detector, input some pizza into here and send request. Oh, that's disgusting. You found pizza. We're gonna kind of change this around here. I'm gonna add all of this to this and then add none of this to this and then just say margin top to give it some top. Let's check this out again. If I input pizza into here. Okay, let's change this from send request to is this pizza? Let's change the font family. We can add this tag for the font family here inside of the button. And hopefully that'll change the text of the button as well as maybe we can do the same for the input. Look at that. So now the button is also Poppins and this is also Poppins here. Is this pizza? Uh, doesn't make it smaller or centered. I'm gonna make this only 10 pixels wide. Let's actually do this. Let's change the ID, put it on here. Maybe that will work. Look at that. Okay, so that worked. I don't know why that took so long to figure out. All I did here was just change the ID from the div here to the image. And if we come back into here, now if we pick our pizza again, is this pizza? You found pizza. We picked this picture of a guy doing a presentation. This should not be pizza. This ain't pizza. Look at that. George Washington, is this pizza? This ain't pizza. Is Kevin O'Leary pizza? This also is not pizza. Is this picture of a black hole pizza? It's really thinking. This ain't pizza. Okay, good. I have some other pictures of pizza that I want to try. I don't know where I found this cursed image of a pizza, but it's like a McDonald's McChicken, some fries and chicken nuggets on a pizza. I think this is pizza though. Yeah, I found pizza. Is Chicago deep dish pizza? It is in fact pizza. Is this picture of a car pizza? This is not pizza. Is this a picture of a pizza? I don't even know what's on that pizza. It looks disgusting. I think it is pizza. It is pizza. How about this picture of a pizza? This is the most pizza picture I've ever seen. What about this troll face pizza? It's really thinking on this one. It found pizza. <laughs> <laughs> this one I thought was hilarious. It's a piece of pizza, but it's absolutely burnt. I don't think this is pizza. Yeah, this is not pizza. It was pizza at one point. So I want to do one last thing, and that's the fact that we can change our prompt in here to get this to detect whatever we want. So we can change things like car, right? You're a car detector. If the image is not a car, if it is a car, if it is car, say you found a car, right? If it is not car, say this ain't a car. Of course, we have to change our title here to car detector. Is this a car? So if you put in a picture of a pizza, say, is this a car? This is not a car. Is this a car? You found a car. What about this picture? Is this a car? Fantastic. What about this picture of 
Elon Musk. This ain't a car, but yeah, I just want to show you guys. You can change this prompt up to basically do whatever you want and respond however you want. This is just a really like simple and fun idea that I had, but that is my AI pizza detector. I'll have a link down in the description below. It's where you can download this exact same HTML file. All you have to do is put in your API key and then you can start using it for yourself. I had a lot of fun putting this one together. This is a great quick project to get your feet wet, learning how to code and how these AI models work. If you like this video, make sure to give it a fat like. Also, if you're interested in working with me on building any kind of AI tool, make sure to book a free 15 minute call down in the description below. But from here, I wanna send you guys over to this video where I take this one step further and do the same thing, but put it into an app on your phone. So I'll see you guys over there.